Hello, you guys, and welcome to the Women's Cave. And Wilnona so gracefully let me have it. I'm Jade. And I'm Wilnona. I'm being, I am being nice and practical today because we have business women, and this is the Business Women Roundtable. And I am not a business woman like that. So oh let me attempt. I'm attempting. This is oh me being my. hushed and controlled. Jay, would you like to say anything further? Yes, yes, I would. Thank you for yielding the floor. Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, I think that's how you say it nice and business like. <laughs> so, we are the authors and of the And I Thought Kids and the Mystery Guy series. So, here we go. And I Thought the Work was Bad with Other Life Lessons. And I Thought Being Grown Up was Easy. And I Thought I Could Juggle It All. Oh, okay. this book. Yeah, I thought we would be in business today. It's a business book. And I thought I did my journey alone, and I thought he was the one. And and I thought the workbook, and then the mystery guide, a sassy sway, at least cooking for food. We don't have that right now. And the business guide, Pastor Suarez and the LBG. Yes, all of those are available on Amazon.com, BarnesandNobles.com, and we have the magazine of the 25 hottest that I'm not even going to try to reach right now because, you know, I'm told. <laughs> we have a lot of that. So, if you guys aren't here to hear about us, you're here to hear about our wonderful <laughs> Marie? Okay, I can hear you now. It's difficult to hear that last statement. Yeah, okay, so we're going to start with you to introduce yourself. Sure, my name is Marie Harvey. I'm a strategic partnership liaison for a company called FSR. FSR is a federal defense contracting firm. We support not only the Department of Defense, uh, but the Maryland state, local government, as well as commercial clients. I support business development efforts, program management, and operations uh, support for our organization working directly with our executive team. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly. Hey, everyone. My name is Kelly Lawrence. I'm based out of Baltimore. I run a consultancy called Speak Volumes Global, which specializes in digital marketing, all things digital marketing, um, web design, all the way through uh, email campaign and paid um, social media advertising, all that good stuff. Uh, with marketing, I inevitably become a pseudo business coach uh, because most of the time we have to do a little bit more work um, to get some uh, branding and consistency and concise messaging done. But a uh, pseudo business coach and digital marketer, Kelly Lawrence, speak all you feel. Very wonderful. April? Hi, my name is April Schluter. I'm the Chief Energy Officer of The Cheerful Mind, and I, in, this, in essence, help people have more fun while getting stuff done. I am a coach, speaker, and author of the book, Finding Success and Balance, My Journey to the Cheerful Mind, and I really work on helping people accomplish the goals and dreams that they want to achieve while having a well-rounded and balanced life and just having more fun. So, thank you. Okay, and so we're gonna have Connie. Connie. She's joining us by phone today, you guys, but she's still super awesome. So, Connie. Hi, everyone. I'm Connie Five, and I'm an author, speaker, coach, and my focus area is coaching and working with lifestyle entrepreneurs because I am just ridiculously excited to help executives and um, entrepreneurs, lifestyle entrepreneurs, live their dream. And because my favorite quote is, your dream is your reality waiting for you to get there, and I want you to get there. Susanna. Hi, I'm Susanna Matthews, known as The Date Maven, and I'm an author, dating coach, matchmaker, and speaker. I help professional growth-minded singles find love and social connection across North America, and I am a rising micro-influencer and brand ambassador. And last but not least, and one of my favorite people who gave a speech ever in all time so far is uh, Andrea. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andrea Stewart, and I am editorial director of Upstart Annapolis Magazine. I live in Bend, Oregon, and I also have Vitality Yoga, in which I help um, people explore the vitality within them using Reiki and yoga. So my wellness and my writing, I also am a poet. Okay, you guys might notice that we literally have women that are ranging from, from you know, for real, like, contractors to 
to take people to magazines, to coaches, and people who coach for business and do marketing. It's a huge range, and I, I know that you guys are probably going, why did we ask you guys? But or people I, in the audience. Or maybe people in the audience are going, what? But I want to say it like this. I think that everyone's viewpoint is very important, and that each person's challenges are going to be different as we go through this uh, theme today about being a woman in business. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know our last question for the day, or next to last question, because Jade has the last question, which is about what challenges do you, especially, what challenges face a women, women especially in business? What is with my mouth? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You need some water? Ah, yes, I do. Okay. So that's going to be our last question. But my question right now is I want to ask you guys, how important is it to diversify your skill set in the business world today? Since we have a diversified crowd, and anyone who wants to just speak up and go for it. I, I would say um, just in terms of being an entrepreneur and having to wear all the hats, you know, the actual work, you know, as right now I'm, I'm a coach, so, you know, actually doing the practice of coaching, but then on top of that, having to market yourself, having to deal with sales, having to deal with finances, and having to deal with everything, every aspect of it, the, the legal stuff, all of the little parts, it is extremely important to be super well-rounded and, and maybe, you know, there's are certain areas of that that are not your area of expertise, but if you are running a one person shop, um, it's, it's also very hard and, in, and to try to do it all your own. So I'm a big fan of delegating when it's not your area of expertise to be efficient, but yeah, you definitely need to at least know all the different parts of running a business. Absolutely. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll jump in on that as well. Uh, I think it is important to diversify, but within uh, moderation or with limits. Uh, Over-diversification in terms of too many labels or too many job titles, which I probably have, uh, can sometimes lead to some confusion within your market about who is she and what does she do exactly. You know, people sometimes have a hard time grasping and remembering your brand if there are just too many monikers and uh, too many shingles hung out. Connie or Scarlett or Marie? Oh, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to add on to what they both said. Very good answers. Um, because if you're not very clear on your marketing, and if you're stretching yourself too far, you're going to confuse the public. And if they're confused, they're not going to buy. So for you as an individual, you know, owning a business, being an entrepreneur, you do wear wear many hats. I mean, I went from a corporate executive to running my own business, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you, you know, at first it was like, oh, I could do everything. But, you know, we cannot do everything. You totally need to understand what you're very good at, and that's the message that you want to share with the public. Everything else internal, whether it's doing your own bookkeeping, doing marketing and branding and sales, whatever it is that you excel at, that's where your focus needs to be. And everything else, and, you know, you, you have to monitor it, you have to oversee it, but if there is someone else out there that you can work with, maybe partner with, where you can provide your services to them, what you excel in, and then they could do the same thing for you as an option to go to, especially when you're an entrepreneur and somebody, you know, just starting out because the budgets are small, so you have to be really cautious about how much you do outsource. So you want to look at other resources that can help you within your business. But stay, stay very focused and specific in your message and what it is that you do so the market doesn't get confused and not buy from you. I think I have to jump in and speak for the advantages of the digital age and, and how that uh, correlates with branding. The good news is, of course, on your entrepreneurial journey, you discover so much about things that uh, one of the pros, um, you know, and then sometimes, it's, so I'm just taking myself for an example, um, I took my digital marketing skills and I applied it instead of to um, the services that other small businesses are able to offer, products instead, um, and I told you all earlier about my reselling business, but um, there's no way to mesh the two, really. If I'm going to sell myself as a client um, who helps small business in digital marketing, I would not put Ann or comma reseller at kelsrockstreads.com. Like, you know, so the good news about uh, the digital age is that they have pieces and have these uh, two different brands and you can target market the two different markets, but it's really important 
um, to keep your messaging as concise and niche as possible, as you know, those are the most successful businesses. So. Sure, and I'll also add, if you're looking to diversify skill or expertise or services that you're offering, do your research on the back end. Instead of reaching and grabbing and approaching potential companies across of various types of business areas, uh, make sure there's a need for your service or your skill set or see what's out there, find out the need, and then devote your resources to a select few areas to begin diversifying. Because in the end, it is very important to have different, uh, different lines of income coming in. And I, it's something that you just have to approach. Um, but you can approach that strategically and make sure you're making the right choice and putting all your resources into the right places. Uh, Andrea, did you want to add anything on this? Yeah, um, especially as it pertains to the wellness community, um, working within that, you know, that paradigm. Um, it's as though there's this pressure to know everything from acupuncture to massage to Reiki to everything. And, and so many people, they have these long lists of everything that they provide. And I think we kind of get diluted instead of doing exactly like what um, Kelly and everyone was talking about, like really honing in on what your skill sets are and saying, what does it have to offer? And what brought me to the wellness community was realizing that everyone could use a lot of these modalities, um, you know, for me, yoga and Reiki. Um, but in that, there was an underserved community, and that's like 90% of the population. I was discovering that as a teacher and as a wellness practitioner, I couldn't afford the services that I was offering. So for me, I translated that into a service where I work on donation basis and I work, you know, and I work with other local shelters and things like that to offer those services to people that ordinarily wouldn't have that opportunity. For me, that's the niche, but it took me seven years to really get it down to say, oh, this is where I belong right now. And this is my purpose with this product. Thank you guys, everyone, for chiming in. I know, and now we have to have the next to the last question. What? Yes, it's that time. The next to the last question. Oh. I Winona, you. the next can, to the last question. Do we have time? Do you guys have what? five more minutes for one, one question before the next to the last question? Everyone? OK, everyone yes! has done. Oh, I love this. Oh, okay. Winona. It's a two-part question since I have to rush. <laughs> Number one, how important is it to find the correct people to support the services we have out there? Like, how do you find them? What do you do? All that stuff. And then number two, does that impact sales? I can go first. Hey! <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so I kind of take a very intuitive approach after, you know, living most of my life mm -hmm. in an overly cerebral state. Um, I started really letting my intuition and letting my gut instinct guide me. And I found that that has opened up, whether through meditation or whatever, when I'm really just putting my energy out there and in, you know, organically me without trying to sell anything for my purposes, that works really well. And I've been noticing, you know, I just moved to Bend, Oregon a little over a year and a half ago. My business is already um, the same size it was in California is small but I believe it's because I just start letting the energy do its thing and that might sound kind of esoteric for some people but for me that has been working really well awesome thank you anyone else Connie oh. could, uh, could I ask you to repeat the question I didn't hear the whole thing please well number one I wanted to know how how do you find people who can support what you're doing like in the business world how do you hire what do you look for that sort okay. of thing and then number two I wanted to know, does that help like make things easier for you to approach new customers and make sales? Okay, and I'm going for me. Uh, what happens for me, it's really important to find someone to work with that really takes care of the details because I'm not a that detailed person. I'm in marketing and sales and I'm out speaking and coaching. So it's critical for me to find that right person that's working on my team that's going to have my back. And um, over the years, I've been doing this for 12 years, and there definitely have been times where I did not have the right person on the team. And when that happens, it definitely does affect the sales. 
So, you know, going back to what we were talking about from the first question, it's really important as an entrepreneur that we really mind everything that we were, that we are doing. We have to oversee everything and not just rely on somebody else and hoping that somebody else is, is doing it. And in terms of finding the right person for your team, there's a lot of things I've come, intuition is one of them. I, I've always relied on that. But I also, I would do personality tests and personality assessments. It might cost a little bit to do all of that, but in the long run, it definitely affects the positive results for the sales that I want to see because with the people that we surround ourselves with, that is what the outside world is going to see. And, you know, if we're working collaboratively and, you know, everyone is a partnership and understands that, the marketing and sales is going to happen and, you know, that's when it's all going to increase. So it's very critical that we do surround ourselves with the right people in order to have a successful business. And it's not just for sales and income, it's also for your brand and your reputation and who you are as well. Marie, I thought of you when you asked the question, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I, I wanted to chime in um, and, and really share with your viewers a hack, if you will. Um, for finding uh, and so I that, am, uh, I'm hearing some feedback. Yes. Are you guys still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're still there. there. Oh, okay. Uh, a hack. Um, people are really missing the opportunity of groups on these social media channels. Um, these like little, very organic groups that are developing around um, niche skill sets. Sometimes it's sometimes it's just product, or sometimes it's like random support groups or whatever. But you'd be really surprised that these people in common that you may have um, over something completely random, who's in there. So if you're a part of any small groups or focus groups, or I forget what they call them, groups on Facebook, um, or even if you want to seek them out, I know I'm a part of a billion, probably way too many, I don't even absorb the content anymore, um, digital marketing groups and people giving out strategic advice. And so if that's who you're looking for, after you call me, um, if I'm not available, Go find one of those groups and just jump in there and say, hey, I'm looking for, you know, blah, 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 because you know that these people are so invested and so involved and, and looking to stay ahead of the curve in their skill set um, because they're in this group. So that's one way to kind of let them vet them, themselves as opposed to doing random Google search and having interviews and spending a lot of time. Kelly, can I ask you quickly, how do you feel that the digital age has affected normal, well, not normal, traditional business? Anyone else Effect answer that when they answer that, that other question? But I just wanted to ask. Affected you. my business? No, no, just affected corporate structures and business in general. Anybody can be a business owner. I mean, it's kind of a really insane time to not take advantage of. I don't care what you sell or what your skill set is. If you make pins, I mean, Etsy has an entire platform just based on you know handmade stuff. So. I think people think of business way too broad and it, it's like a man, of course, in a suit and a this and it's so stuffy, but really you can make some, you know, shea butter in your kitchen and be in business uh, just taking pictures of your product. And so I really want to encourage people to break down the, you know, pretense that you have to be this some sort of business savvy, you know, person in order to sell stuff. No, you just need to do what you do, take a picture of it and share it with your community and kind of let it, let it go. And when you reach the point of, you know, branding and operations, you'll know, but that, you know, you don't have to attack that first. I think particularly as women, we like to think way far ahead and it's like, no girl, just, just stir the pot, take the picture, you know, keep it as simple as possible for as long as possible. And once the money flows, then you'll talk about delegating stuff. So. Anyone else? Anyone else? Sure. So I can also uh, chime in on recruiting, finding skills and talent. Um, I am also a recruiter as part of my function as we have a new projects that we're approaching. And uh, the one thing I love is, you know, my focus that I'm able to access is being able to search capability, but also motivation. Uh, we don't always have to say, you know, we don't have hard lines as far as what we're looking for. When we're looking for recruiting. You're looking for someone that has the right mix of uh, skill and then also character, which is very, very important. Uh, so of course, uh, 
as Andrea said, you're looking for someone that you can connect with your authentic self to connect with that right type of person. We like to be able to observe talent. You get referrals, you pull from your network. Networking is very important. And uh, that is uh, probably the best approach for being able to find someone that you have observed and uh, can pull out those key characters, the key characteristics such as hardworking, dedicated, loyal, etc. Nice music going on in the background. Yes, please. Love the soundtrack. Yup, there it is. Do it again, girl. Yo, let it go. Sometimes, as a, as a, you have to know how to let go. <laughs> What's the last question? Oh, the, the one about uh, hiring people, sales, and digital and the digital effect on corporate America. Oh, I don't. I don't know that I have any strong position to offer on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was just still thinking about how critical and essential it is to not only find people who support what you do by buying from you, um, but understanding that when you first launch, not everyone who shares their energy or enthusiasm for your idea is necessarily your buyer. So sometimes that can be a little misleading. You can launch something and everyone giving you high fives and hugs and telling you how brilliant and fantastic you are. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they're supporting you with their dollars. So understanding that there is a difference between that audience that's there to be your cheerleader and rally for you and then the people who are actually going to invest in themselves and spend with you. Thank you. Thank that you. just applies to everybody. <laughs> That's good. That's good advice. Wasn't yeah. it good advice? It was great advice. This is why we have business round tables, you guys. This is why we do it. Connie, you were saying? I just saying that was excellent advice. Great advice. Because your cheerleaders are not necessarily the ones that become your customers and your clients. So excellent advice. Yeah. April, April, you want to be last, last words? Um, yeah, I don't, I think everybody has shared very, you know, lots of different perspectives and I don't know if I necessarily have anything to add, but I guess from the efficiency standpoint of thinking about how much energy you have that you can put out and, you know, being somebody who has time and time again tended to burn out and knowing that, um, you know, you can only do so much if you're, if you're running your own business or your business and to make sure that you have the right people surrounding you. Communication is extremely important because if you can't, um, you know, you've got a vision in your head, but if you can't communicate it to others, it's hard for them to be able to help you fulfill that if you're not communicative. Enough. And um, I think too, just making sure that, um, you know, it's almost like the more the merrier when you have people who are supporting you, then you can actually get more done. And so, you know, I think about, you know, my assistant's able to kind of filter through some of my emails so that I can, you know, focus on, on calls, or, you know, making, uh, you know, making sales and all of that stuff. And he does all of my marketing. He does all of, all of those things. And he understands who I am as a person and is able to emulate that to the point where, people don't realize that somebody else is working on that content, but he knows me so well that, that he can do that. And because of that, I'm getting a lot more visibility and it's not necessarily all me that's doing it. So sorry to anybody who thought that I was doing it all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> now I'm sad. No, I'm not sad. It's good to know. No, it's, nice to no, know. It's, it's always nice to know that when people are like, no, I have help with people behind the scenes. You're like, oh, good. So it's not cheating. Okay, good, because I was starting to be overwhelmed. <laughs> Absolutely. You can't do it all. I mean, you can do a lot of things on your own, but you can't do every single little thing. So it, it always helps to delegate and get help. April, I'm so sorry to do this, but you, you worked in corporate and now you work in kind of like the digital sphere. So do you have anything to say on that? Um, it's interesting because I think that a lot of times, um, you know, a lot of times, when people become entrepreneurs, it's because they want to have a certain amount of freedom. And I did feel that, you know, in a, in a more corporate structure, you know, you kind of have, there's a lot of politics. Whereas when you're running your own business, you can kind of do the things that you want. So if I want to take a coaching call in my robe, I can do that, which is what I did this morning. But, um, there's this, this, 
idea of what do you value more? Do you value the stability and the, the routine and the structure that's not in you? Or do you want to have autonomy to, to be more creative and do what you want? And, and you kind of have to decide. Um, and you also need to just make sure that you're in a place where you can, you know, you can start a business. Because right, when, whenever you're starting a business, there's always going to be some investments that need to be made. And you don't want to start a business in this place where you're like, I'm going to create a business to make money. Um, but then if you don't have a good foundation, it's going to be stressful. And then you're coming at, you know, your business with this, with the scarcity mindset. And you're like, I need clients or I need, I need to make sales. And that's not necessarily the way that you want to position yourself. Um, when you're, when you're asking people to invest in you. So, um, it's, it's just definitely like a, a mindset that you need to make sure that you can delineate. Are you in it? Um, you know, do you want to, do you want the stability of an, a nine to five job or do you, do you need that flexibility? And you know, if it, if you do, and you have the ability to do that, then, you know, maybe, um, entrepreneurship is a, is a good option. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Jay, those last questions. So the last, no, next you, you last said, last. no, you're the last. Next to last. I'll do last. It's fine. Okay. She wants to, okay. I was trying to share. Y'all saw that, right? I wasn't even trying to be a narcissist about it. Um, <laughs> So the, the next to the last question was about the challenges that especially affect with women and business. You see, my mouth actually did that better after I had some water. <laughs> so whoever wants to answer that, go for it. Anyone? So the question is, what are the challenges of women in business? Yes. That especially affect women in business. Okay, okay. Um, that is a tough question, I, and, we, and I am going to be honest with you because so many things have have changed over the years. I mean, since I even started in business, and you know, I'll be dating myself, but I've been you know in business for over thirty years. And you know, initially starting out, I remember you know there were so many so many more restrictions on women to enter the workplace, to enter an office, and what you you know what you had to do, and how you had to dress, and how you had to behave, and different behaviors that you had to put up with and we've noticed a lot of that you know again coming out over the last year or so but some of the challenges again for women in business is really um I mean, and this is my advice for women, is allow yourself to be seen as a professional, that you are here for business and you mean business. And when you change the way you behave and change the way you act, people are going to see you differently. They're going to respond to you different, differently. And knowing that you are a businesswoman, they're going to be you know, ready to do business with you. So that's my advice really to the woman, is just to allow people to see you as a woman in business and then that's will project and then that's how they are going to see you back and that's how they are going to to want to work with you absolutely thank you so much and thank you for the advice for a woman who's entering business anyone else i'll jump in um i'm fairly new in, in business only three or four years old now um and i am learning boundaries um and goal setting um, and on around my goal study um, and just kind of making sure things measure up um, because you'll find yourself doing a lot of things and resenting your work, resenting your clients, resenting going the extra mile and so forth. If you don't advocate for yourself and kind of draw the lines, whether that's this is the price or whether this is the project scope or whether that this is, you know, the appointment time and my availability, you know, if you continuously step over your own boundaries too much, you will burn out and um and this will be totally unfulfilling even though even though you may even make a lot of money um if you don't continuously respect um, yourself and your time and the things that you value and um and are not working toward your goal consistently this can become something where you're just like literally grabbing for every opportunity everybody wants your time you, you never have any time for yourself and that is the worst uh, place to be in business. So you'll find yourself back in the nine to five gig, you know, hitting the reset button real soon um, without boundaries. So thank you. Anyway. I, would, I would just chime in. I, I love what Kelly said, just because that's, that's definitely what was on my mind as well. And I'm a mom, so I have two kids. And um, as an example, you, you kind of need to know you. And I think too, as, and maybe this isn't just for women, but I think 
Um, it's just for anybody who's an entrepreneur, when you're working in the nine to five, you have a schedule, you know that you need to get to work, you work and then you come home and then you have your free time. Whereas your worlds start to collide when you are running a small business and you can't necessarily shut down. And so I couldn't say, Hey, my kids are off school. Um, my 20 clients, I'm sorry, you, I'm just going to shut down. You can't really do that. Um, as a, as a business person. And so how can you keep the, the thing running? Um, even if you personally want to take some, some downtime. And so, um, ha having to be very, very diligent with your time management and just kind of knowing, um, how to set specific time or you work um, and, and how to do that in the most efficient way so that you don't have your hands in five different things and is, is super, super important. But that's all I wanted to say. Awesome. Well, thank you. That's, so we got Scarlett, Susanna, and Marie. Anyone? Um, sure. I'll jump in, please. So I don't know that this is so much a woman problem as it is maybe a service provider problem, but many of the women business owners that I do know are providing services, not goods. And in many markets, and it depends on your location, but in some markets, it's still very difficult for people to understand the value of that which is intangible. And I struggle with that every single day. People are very willing to pay for widgets and gadgets and gizmos, technology, uh, manufacturing, but um, to provide health, things that are in the, the realm of health and happiness and personal growth and professional growth, that continues to be a little bit um, uh, more nebulous to people and harder to measure outcomes. And so sometimes there's less value placed on uh, practitioners like myself. I can understand that. Yeah, yeah, we can understand. yeah. Our mother had a serve, um, not our mother. Yeah, whatever. It feels like our one mother. Other, one of just go there <laughs> and say, yeah, they had a service. My mother had a service business. Her mother had a service business. And so, yeah, definitely trying to explain that. And we now have service businesses. Go figure. It's trying to explain that to people going, wait, what am I getting now? The why? I could do that myself. Yeah, you could. Just if you do it but, that well. Do you want to? Do you want to? That's another question. I'm sorry. You jumped in. My bad. <laughs> Other people? Connie, if I could jump in on that too, uh, I love what the ladies were just saying uh, because there's also that perception of, oh, well, you you work from home, you 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 have time, and I mean I can remember my brother just walking into my home and saying, hey, do this. You're just sitting here doing nothing, you know. It's like, uh, no, I am doing something. I'm doing a business. I have a service business, so it is hard. For, and again, this is for women and men. It is hard for people to see that perceived value when you're own, when you're when you're providing a service. And I don't want to say only providing a service, but it is harder for people to see that perceived value. And and that's one of the things that you know we have to remember as entrepreneurs to, to you know put that value out there. And that you know goes back to you know, being very clear and very specific on what it is that you do. And then again, setting setting those boundaries. So I just wanted to say that was great great comments from the ladies. Thank you. I do want to share a bit of our conversation. Um, three days, a, a couple days ago, uh, when we got, we went out or whatever, and I was telling you guys because uh, I want to offer solution. I mean, you know, this all sounds good in practice, but having the hard conversation is just that it's hard. Um, and we were talking about raising the floor. Um, and so, what I would, as a service-based um, business woman, uh, initially selling my consulting fee, my consulting. Um, time and, and energy and creative, you know, thought or whatever. It was really, really hard. And so I am working on now, of course, what I call raising the floor and making my service a product. Um, and you see it all the time, whether it's an e-course or, you know, a seminar or whatever, whatever. But, and, you know, I think we're maybe getting to the point of saturation, but your market is your market. Your, your followers are your followers or whatever. But I want to encourage anybody who is maybe like, approaching exhaustion or just like capacity to think about um, packaging the information or, or what it is you have to offer and maybe what that looks like um, in order to say, okay, well, this is the price without me holding your hand, spending the time, you know, blah, blah, blah. Therefore, and then, and then it's easier to have the conversation of, and this is the price if I am in front of you, if I am going to hold your hand, if I am, you know what I mean? Just thinking of ways to duplicate yourself as a small business owner, whether that looks like packaging your service somehow as, as a product. It doesn't even have to be, you know, super expensive. But then people can say, oh, she's right. She's charging me this amount for her time because there is an amount without her time, you know. And with, with it being zero, then it's difficult 
to validate, you know, why your price is, is so high. But no, I have an option if you want to, if you want me to help you passively, but I do have an option as well if you want me to pat, if you want me to help you directly. So just a solution. That's amazing. Okay, you guys, we're going to do the last question because we are so over time and we know you guys are business women and you guys are busy. So my last question is, where can people find you? on the web or wherever and what's next for you guys and we're gonna start with suzanne because not because she's more important just because like she's there right? <laughs> um, well thank you again so much for including me in the tribe today and if people want to reach out and connect um, there are lots of ways to do that www.thedatemaven.com is my primary website i'm also on social media so you can find me on youtube linkedin Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And uh, email address is Susanna at thedatemaven.com. Thank you so much for coming today. Connie, would you like to say anything? Uh, yeah, thank you again for having me on, on your round table. I love the discussion, and I know we could just keep on going for several hours more. But I'm Connie Fife, mm -hmm. and you can find my, me on my website, which is Fife Group. Dot com and Fife is spelled P-H-E-I-F-F group.com and my email is Connie at Fife group.com and you can find me on all of the social media platforms. Again, just look for Connie Fife, the Unstoppable Diva. Awesome, Connie. Thank you so much for joining us today. Maybe one day somebody will do a conference. We can all come and oh have a round table. So and, have a great. Great. and then we can all do workshops. <laughs> it would be great. Um, you know, now that I've said it, I'm planning it out in my head, right? I was like, okay, they will do it here. Well, yeah, I've already seen the maybe. stage. I said, I said maybe. maybe. Okay, <laughs> Kelly. Sorry, I was muted. Um, you can check out my consultancy website at www.speakballs, S-P-E-A-K-V-O-L-S, short for speak volumes, dot global, S-P-E-A-K-V-O-L-S dot global, not dot com. Um, you can email me at kelly at speakballs dot global, um, or check me out on Twitter. Um, what am I? Don't quote Kels. So don't quote me over there, you know, make America tweet again. And where else am I? I'm all over on, on Facebook. My name's Kelly Lawrence. I'm not hitting that all. Also, um, I would love to exchange contacts with all ladies in the connect. Awesome, awesome. Um, Andrea, your name wrong, sorry. Uh, so you can reach me at vitalityyoga.us. Uh, it's my wellness business. And, um, you can email me at andrea at vitalityyoga.us. You can also find me on Facebook under Andrea P. Stewart or Vitality Yoga. And I'm at Yoga Drea at a Yogi Drea at um, both Instagram and Twitter. So that's where you can find me. You guys, you can yeah. always find her at Upstart too. Yes, also that and Marie. I always forget. Like, see, trying to keep things separate, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Upstart Annapolis, which is, you know, my pride and soul of all the writing and everything um, uh, with publisher Jimmy Davies. So you can reach me at upstarteditor um, at gmail.com as well. Awesome. Marie? All right. And for me, I'm not all over, unfortunately, like it's wonderful, but you can connect with me on LinkedIn. And also you can reach me at mharvey at fsrpeople.com. Awesome. And April, to close this out. Yep. Um, energy and bounce, please. Close you us can out. find me on uh, www.thecheerfulmind.com. I'm on all the socials, so most likely it's easiest to find me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. And so just, but you can go to my website and find everything. And then my book is available on Amazon. Um, so yeah. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you ladies for coming. We really appreciate it. We kind of do looking forward to doing this every year. Yes. And having different viewpoints because I think it's always good to, you know, try to start off your fall in a good place. So thank you guys for coming. And most definitely today, this our tagline applies. Wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Wilnona. And I'm not showing my nails today because these are professional ladies and they don't need to see that mess. And Jade, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.